chapel. Are you guys awake? You better be after that. So good to see you guys on this fine Monday morning. Um, hey, real quick, got a couple announcements. First of all, where are my seniors at? It's kind of bittersweet, but we got 50 days left till commencement. Somebody's excited. So uh, right, uh, we got 49 days par uh, party for seniors, Thursday night, March 9th, from seven to nine at the CAC Lawn, 50 days left. You go, let's go, seniors. Let's give it out one more time for our seniors. Some sad news, but we don't have the gathering tomorrow night. I know, I know. But instead, we got something really great happening in the arena. GCU's Got Talent. That's gonna be here tomorrow night, 8 to 10 p.m. And uh, it'll be in the arena. You can get tickets today starting at noon. Okay, so come check us out for that. Uh, we've got Spiritual Formation Workshop on Celebration today um, in the prayer chapel at 2.30. And then uh, next week, there's no chapel. Why? Spring break, baby. All right, spring break. But we'll be back in two weeks on March the 20th, and we're gonna have an all-musical worship chapel featuring the worship team from Church for the Nations. So come back from spring break and let's just have a whole morning of worship. It's gonna be awesome and great. But today, we have uh, Brian Kruckenberg from New City Church with us, bringing the word. So it's gonna be a great morning. So let's continue in our time of worship. And before we do that, let's just read God's word together. The call to worship this morning is Psalm 136, verses one through three. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. And give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Let's praise our King this morning.
faithful for finding us when we feel lost. God, we just wanna praise you, praise you throughout this week. We thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Thank you to you over there who said good morning to me. I appreciate you. Um, man, I just um, sense the Spirit's presence in here. So I was just praying over here before I came up. Like, just stay in that, stay in that moment. Stay in His presence. Allow Him to minister and do what He wants to do. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your attention for the next 25 minutes. I hope to bring a word from God to you that God might use in your life and might encourage you with. My name is Brian. I've got the privilege of being here several times. I've got several of my New City folks in the audience. Can I hear some love? Okay, thank you uh, for that. Make me feel at home here. It's a, a special place you have here, and I hope that you never take it for granted what God is doing here, the professors that you have that pray for you, uh, that diligently teach you how to see the world through God's eyes, regardless of what it is you're studying. Of course, at the center of all the studies is the scripture, the God-inspired word that he delivers to us, his people. And as we sang about this God, I was just going, wow, if I could have had a hand in putting together this worship set list, I think I would have done just what they did. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Because we talked and sang about this God of Jacob and this God of Moses. And that's where I wanna take us there, at least at the very end of Moses' life, most of you probably are familiar with what Moses did. I mean, he did something rather cool. Uh, God used him to do something pretty cool, I should say. Lead his people, that is God's people, out of slavery into what we know as the promised land. And God used Moses to part the Red Sea. We just sang about that. And God prepared his people to enter the promised land. Now, one of the sad parts about this story, and I feel really bad, is Moses, you know this, right? Moses never actually went into the promised land. He put up with these knuckleheads for 40 years and never got to go into the promised land. I've asked God why that is, and God said, it's not for you to know yet, okay? But anyway, we have... Two people, and primarily one we're gonna look at today, his name's Joshua, who God had seen as faithful and God was now gonna use this guy named Joshua to lead his people into this promised land. This promise had been around for a long, long time. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and others. About 400 years, the people of Israel had been waiting for this moment. They got to the edge of the promised land, you know what happened? is they looked at the land that God had promised them and God sends 12 spies into the land and 10 of the 12 that come back are like, yeah, it's, ooh, it's good land. Milk and honey, all that stuff. It is good, it is fruitful, it is blessed, it is bountiful, all the things God said it was. But there's big people over there. There's big walls over there. We can't go. Joshua and Caleb were like, what do you mean we can't go? God said he's giving us this land. Yeah, the walls are tall. Yeah, the people are big. Yeah, it might actually cost us something. And the people said, no, we don't wanna go. They rebelled, they bickered, they complained. And ultimately, a whole generation passes away. But now is the time of Joshua. So I wanna pick up the story there. This leader would take God's people into this land. God wants to take you somewhere. Maybe he wants to start today. Joshua chapter one, 
verses one through five. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. What a great word for us. What a great word and an encouragement here. But as I already mentioned, it starts out rather bluntly with the statement, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now that's pretty harsh, but when you get to be my age, I turned 50 last year, okay? Yeah, okay? There is life after 50, y'all, just, just so you know, okay? Um, so when you get to be my age, not that I think about this every day, of course, but it, it gets a little closer to you, and this just struck me. Moses is dead. But God's doing something new here that he wants to move his people into. In many ways, the book of Joshua is a book of new beginnings. Maybe some of us in this room today need a new beginning. It's, isn't it true that God's mercies renew every morning? Every morning is a gift to us to recognize that yesterday is gone. There's no getting yesterday back. There's no getting last week back, getting last year back. There's nothing we can do about that, whether it was good or bad, because some of us, and this was me for like two and a half years, from 20, March of 2020 to about, uh, I don't know, October of 2022, I hated COVID. I wanted to go back before COVID. And I was stuck in this cycle of just lamenting. And finally, when I realized, hey, God gives me a new opportunity every day that I could finally get my head above water because God wants to do something new with us. And so God was encouraging Joshua here to go. He says, go in to this land. If you were to go back and read Deuteronomy, which comes before Joshua in our Bible, this is the story of Moses telling this people, hey, your ancestors messed all this up, and so now it's time to go, now it's time to go, now it's time to go. And so we have this theme over and over again of this, that God is a God of movement. God, listen to this, God loves you just where you are. God loves you just how you are. There's nothing you can do right now where God would say, oh, now I love you more. No, God sent Jesus for you just as you are right now. But God also loves you too much to allow you to stay just as you are right now. God has more for us. God is a God of movement. When they were 40 years before this, right, there was this 40 year detour. <laughs> Did you, did you know that God's people reached the edge of the promised land in 12 days? But it took them 14,600 days to enter the promised land. It didn't have to take that long. They were disobedient to God's promise and to God's blessing. Now, here's the thing. God will use our disobedience. Can I get an amen in the room? God, God ever use your disobedience? God's used my disobedience. God uses all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. God will use our disobedience, but you know what I think God would rather do? He'd rather use our obedience. And Joshua and Caleb were obedient to this and they said, hey, God says we've been here long enough and it's time to go. When I read these passages and verses, and I've read them a lot over the last 
many years, I ask myself, and I still ask myself this question, where have I been for too long? Or where have I been long enough? Where have you been long enough? Is it a state of mind? Is it a habit? Right, don't just think physically. Where have you been for too long? Where is God calling you to move? Because God is calling his people to move. And he chooses Joshua. Joshua's original name wasn't Joshua. It was actually Hosea, which means salvation. And then Moses changes it to Joshua, which means the Lord is salvation. But, but Joshua, before he was this warrior who would lead these people into the promised land, Joshua, before he was this great man, he started out, well, he started out like all, all the Israelites did. He started out as a slave. He started out as a servant. He started out being faithful in the little things. You can go back through your Old Testament, Exodus chapter 17, and read about Joshua being faithful in the little things. Be faithful in little. This year, I made a commitment. I won't call it a New Year's resolution. Um, every time I do that, I fail. So this year, I just said it's a commitment to read more. I've, I know I read a lot for what I do with my job, uh, actually, but... I wanted to just read more for growth, read more for leadership, et cetera. And so I picked up this book at the beginning of this year called Atomic Habits. It's a great book. You should pick it up. It's pretty popular. It's by James Clear, Atomic Habits. Of course, the title kind of gives it away. It's like our, these little things, these little habits that we have every day are what produce long-term results. And he has this great little line in there where he says this, every action you take is a vote for the person you wish to become. So I'm reading this book in my office, I'm not making this up, okay? <clears throat> not that pastors make things up, all right? But I'm reading this book in my office and I have this jacket it's made by Viore, okay? And I have it thrown over in my chair and I look and it's kind of open to the uh, inside of the jacket and there was a little patch sewn in there. I had never noticed this patched before. And so I pick up this piece of clothing and I read this little patch and it said this, how you spend your days is how you spend your life. I'm reading this book I'm reflecting on this now, and it's God telling me, every day I get to vote on the person I wish to become. How, literally, think about it, how you spend every day, days become weeks, weeks become months, months become years, you kind of get the point, I hope. The scripture principle is little, or faithful with little, Faithful with much. Last week, I, I listened back to uh, Pastor Tim's message. Talked about the Holy Spirit. He talked about, as a young baseball player, he thought there was a scout there to scout him. If you all were here, did you hear the story? Now, the scout wasn't there to scout him, but to scout someone else. But you know, if you're an athlete, you never know when there's a scout in the audience. Faithful with the little things that you do. I told, I told my son that when he was playing rec league baseball. I said, son, you never know when there's a club coach in the audience looking. Do those little things. Right? We all want to hit the game-winning shot. We all want to hit the game-winning uh, home run. We all want right the top of the pedestal. We all want the gold medal, but do we want to grind day in and day out? That's what Joshua did faithful to those little things that God had called him to. Not only was Joshua a servant, probably and a warrior, but probably most importantly, he was a worshiper. If you go back and read in like Exodus chapter 33, you don't have to remember all this, but you can listen to it later if you cared to. But in Exodus chapter 33, Moses would do this. Moses had what was called a tent of meeting. This was pretty cool. With his tent set up, Moses goes into the tent to meet with the Lord. And when Moses is in there, it says that the, the Holy Spirit or the Lord's glory would shine on him and Moses would like glow after he came out of the tent. That's pretty cool. 
But Joshua, he was Moses' servant. And so after Moses would leave, the scripture records that Joshua would linger in the presence of the Lord. And I asked myself this question. What do, what do I linger next to or around? I'm like, well, I, I linger around the fridge and the pantry often, okay? You ever do that before? You look into the fridge and you're like, there's nothing in there and you close it and 30 seconds later you think that, you know, the cheese somehow combines with the tortilla and you're gonna make a pizza just by opening that fridge back up or something. I linger there. Sometimes I linger on Netflix. How about, how about you? Do you linger on TikTok? None of you would never do that. Or Instagram, where you just, ling, you just linger there and an hour goes by or whatever. Maybe this is a question for all of us. When is the last time I lingered in the presence of God? When's the last time I sat in God's presence with his word open? It's the last time I put my phone on do not disturb and I didn't scroll and I didn't turn on the TV and I didn't turn, all right? And I just put everything down and I allowed myself to linger in the presence of the Lord. I'm so convicted by that because I don't do that often enough. And we have been given this promise that the creator of everything is here and available for us. Isn't that pretty amazing? And yet a lot of us spend our hours and our days consumed with things that aren't going to lead us to that person we want to become. Joshua lingered in the presence of God and I have to believe that prepared him, right, and those little things, it prepared him for when he went out into the promised land and yeah, there were big people and yeah, there were tall walls, but he saw opportunity and not just obstacles when everybody else except for one other person saw only the obstacles and not the opportunities. Some of us have lots of obstacles in our lives. Maybe it's our family history, maybe it's financial, maybe it's health related. I don't know what it might be, but God has placed before you lots of opportunity as well. God, God has said to you this, I have prepared something for you. We sing about that too, right? God, this is what blows my mind about God. Well, there's a lot of things that blow my mind about God, but God exists tomorrow just like he exists in today. God exists in your tomorrow just like he exists in your today and your yesterday. Do you believe that? Do you, do you believe that God, because he's outside of space and time, like nothing's gonna happen tomorrow in your life, God's gonna go, I didn't see that coming. Woo, I, I don't know. Hey, good luck with that. God is in our future. That's what he kept telling to them. I will, be, I will go in before you. I will fight for you. I've proven myself faithful. I will fight for you. I will be there for you. I love that last song that we sung. I never heard that before. A girl had such a sweet voice and she started talking about coming, God coming out with it, her enemy's head. Did you guys hear that? I was like, all right then, let's go, okay? Let's go whole Old Testament here. But, but God, that's, he's fighting for you. He's fighting for you. He wants you to trust him. Joshua, he said, Joshua, I'm calling you something big here. And then he had to do this, and this is encouraging to me. And he had to speak to Joshua in this way. You've heard some of these verses, I'm sure. They're kind of famous ones. Joshua 1, uh, the next four or five verses. Be strong and courageous. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn for it, from it for, to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful 
to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's just an interesting that Joshua had, had by every account been following what God had told him to do. And yet God sees something here. He's like, Joshua, I need to remind you. And he gives him a command. Now, it's interesting here is God gives us lots of commands to do things, okay? You probably get some commands in your life to do things. Like, does anybody, did anybody have to turn in homework last night, okay? Okay, was that a request or was that a requirement? That was a, that was a requirement if you wanna get a grade, right? You can't just go, well, she requested. No, she requested, or she didn't request, she required or she commanded that you post that homework, okay? We're used to this growing up. We get lots of commands from our parents, from our teachers, from our coaches to do things. But notice this isn't a command to, to do. This is a command to be. God is commanding us to have the right state of being. I wrote this in my notes just reflecting a few minutes before I got up here. This, so this is like super fresh, it's in ink here. To do what God is calling us to do, we must first be what God is calling us to be. After all, I was thinking, God's name is I am. That's a pretty cool name. It's God, so we can't steal it. I am. That's God. I am. I always have been. I always will be. God is calling Joshua to have the right state of being. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Somebody in the room needs to hear that. Be strong and courageous. What is God call, where is God calling you to go? Where have you been for too long? God is with you in your future. He's present in your future, just like he's present in your today. He's telling you to move forward and don't go back. You know what's crazy about this story? When Moses was leading these people, these people, had escaped slavery from Egypt and they wanted to go back. It's actually quite remarkable. You could read about it. I'll read a couple of these passages to you briefly, quickly. In Numbers chapter 11, Moses records, now the rabble, I love that word, the disorderly crowd that was among them had a strong craving and the people of Israel also wept again and said, oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Numbers chapter 14 and verse two, all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, would that we had just died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become prey would it not be better for us just to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let's choose a leader and go back to Egypt. God had fed them manna from heaven. God had fed them or given them water from a rock. God had given them then meat or quail from heaven. And all they could do is go, oh gosh, remember, remember that food? <laughs> That food we had in Egypt, that was so good, man. It was free too. We had leeks and the fish. Oh, it was awesome. And you were slaves in Egypt. Do you remember that? Do you remember how the Egyptian tax masters, tax masters gave you so much work to do, you died trying to do it, some of your friends and family? Remember the command by the Pharaoh of Egypt who said, when an, an, a Hebrew woman gives birth to a boy, take that boy and drown it and kill it. And these people wanted to go back to that. My brothers and sisters, I found this to be true in our own lives. Listen, so often when things get tough, we wanna go back. Somebody lied to you when they said it's easy to follow God. It's not easy to follow God. 
Because you have to sacrifice to follow God. God calls you to deny your flesh and take up your cross and follow him. The culture wars against our following of God. It's not hard, but don't go back. Don't go back to a life before Jesus. Don't do it. Never go back to a place from which the Lord has delivered you, ever. Right, you, you see this when people struggle with addiction or, right, or whatever, and they kind of break free from that addiction, and then it gets really hard, and what happens so often, they go back. You see some person that was in an abusive relationship, and, and it's hard to break those binds, and they get free of that. Maybe you've seen this, and then they go back. Now, God has mercy for all of us and grace for all of us. But if that's you, if that's speaking to you, don't go back. These people wanted to go back. They couldn't see what God had placed before them. God promises them, again, remember back in verse five, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Again, here he says, don't be frightened. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God is with you, God is with you. By the power of his Holy Spirit, he's with you. Here's all he asks us to do. God says, I'll give you great success. I'll do this. But did you hear, were you listening when I read the word the first time? There's sort of a condition here. He, he wants us to keep in mind verses seven and eight that I read. He says, he says, be careful to do according to the law of Moses. He says, don't turn from it from the left or the right. He says this, he says, meditate on the word of God day and night. Don't let it depart from you. In other words, always keep the word of God close to you. He says, then you will have good success. We have to stay close to God like Joshua to know when to go and where to go. <laughs> I wrote this in my notes. Don't try to go somewhere God is not calling you to go. And I can't figure that out for you. That's you, that's the Holy Spirit, that's friends in your life praying for you, that's professors, that's primarily though and ultimately though you and the Holy Spirit and God. God had told Joshua where to go God had told him, I'll be with you. God had told him, I, don't want, I won't just be with you, I'm already ahead of you. I love that truth about God. He's already ahead of us. He says, now just listen to my word and know that I'll always be there. And it's just the promise that we hear all over the place when we think about Jesus and who he was. I was listening to Pastor Tim's message from last week and I'm really glad that God prompted me to go listen to what he had to say because it really just is my conclusion here when he talked about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14, 15, and 16. The promise of the Holy Spirit. And the writer of Hebrews writing this and taking those New Testament and Old Testament truths and melding them together because it is the same truth where he says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I don't know where God's calling you, but God is a God of movement. God is calling us today to be faithful in those little things. And let God take care of those big things. But for today, take charge of those little things. Linger in the presence of the Lord. Set, set an appointment, I have to do this. Set an appointment with you and the Lord on your calendar. You say, oh, that sounds kind of programmatic. I don't care. If you don't tell what your time to do, you'll never wear, know where your time went. Put yourself an appointment on your calendar with you and God and listen and linger. Knowing that God is with you and he goes before you, he'll fight for you. Do not fear or be dismayed.
God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for your encouragement to us through this man's life, Joshua. I thank you, Lord, again for this place. Lord, I pray for blessings upon the young men and the young women here today. I ask God that you would spark something in them, that you may need to rekindle a flame by the power of your Holy Spirit. I ask, Lord, in your grace and your mercy that you do that. Lord, I pray for those of us who might be struggling, who might be doubting, who might be questioning your goodness. Lord, I pray that you would show them to not go back, to look forward. God, I pray for healing where there's been abuse or neglect. God, I pray for strength and courage where there's anxiety and fear. God, I pray for friendships and community where a trusted voice is needed. And ultimately, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak to our spirits so that we might know where it is you're leading us to go. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross, dying for us, and sending your spirit to be with us forever and ever. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Have a great week. Go Lopes. Let's go. Let's bring back a a championship. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye.